Hi guys, it's Blackie for Sean's Forge Bushcraft. Today, I would like to discuss a little bit of theory with you. Now, a lot of times, and probably the best way for me to do this, would be one of them big old dry erase boards. I'm not a fan of it, although I will be getting one pretty soon because there's some things that's just easier to explain that way. But I'm going to cover an idea about an emergency bag, sometimes called a bug out bag, sometimes called a vehicle bag. And so what I recommend you do is stop here, grab a piece of pencil and paper, and then start back up so that you can jot down what I'm about to say if it's of interest to you. Okay? I'll wait. Okay, now, here's what we're going to talk about. What is, and we will use the term, uh, an emergency bag? Well, it's exactly that. This is a bag and a content that is tailored toward a perceived threat or a perceived need. Better way to say it. So let's talk about what that would be. For example, right now in Upper New England, they're having blizzards. So it would make sense to be prepared for that. During the summer, you may be in extreme droughts and things like that, and you may want to be prepared for that. So, what I do, and me personally, and I did a, a bug out bag review way back years ago. Um, the bag should have, in my case, here in my part of the country, Lower Alabama, two season. So there's two bag sets. There is a core group that will be in the bag no matter what. And then there's the seasonal additions that are put into it. So let's first start with the core bag. In this core bag I will have a three means of making fire fire kit like I've talked about in my videos. Two forms of flame, one form of friction. Fair seam rod, I've got a lighter and I've got another form of fire. Okay, Three forms of fire. I have a small piece of tinder, small bit of tinder to get me going. I will have, that's the fire kit. I will have a good cutting implement, which means a knife or something like that, chopper, reflecting your environment, what you need, and what you're comfortable with. I will have a bag that is capable of carrying all of my kit. Now this bag is important. It needs to be comfortable for me to wear, which means I need to try it out ahead of time. It's going to suck if you've got to walk out and you've got a bag that pinches you really, really bad and rubbing blisters on you or something like that when you're already in a bad situation. So try this out ahead. The bag should not attract a great deal of attention. Remember, you're in a bad situation. You want to attract attention when you want it. You don't want to attract attention when you don't. Now let me explain that. In a Katrina or something like that or a Sandy Hook or whatever, when there's a lot of lawlessness going on and we're trying to get out of the danger zone, I do not want to be looking like I got a $1,500 backpack. I don't want to look like I got a lot of money. I want to look common and plain and I want to just blend in and walk out. On the other hand, if I'm in snow or something like that, I want to bright something that's going to attract attention. Therefore, like with the packs that I use, I often will have, you know, a way of attracting attention and then inside of it I carry a big old huge bandana with which I can attract attention if I want it. For the most part I don't and so my pack is very subdued. It's an old military pack, that German pack I use a lot. And that way I don't attract a lot of attention in a bad situation when I'm trying to get out. Okay? Now, the contents of that bag should be, I need at least three days worth of food. I need at least a gallon of water. I need a method of purifying and filtering water. I need some sheltering device, usually a tarp, and the ability to put that tarp up quickly, like a couple of bungee cords. A few stakes, go ahead and tie nylon loops to the corners of the tent, of the tarp, so that I've already got something. Or, like I had demonstrated before, I will take my tent stakes and go ahead and put a big loop on it 
so I can just run it up to the grommet, pull it back through itself, pull it out tight and stake it. No need to tie anything. Okay? Makes it very quick. Easy to replace, easier to take care of. So I've got a shelter that I can use in the weather. I have fire making ability, I have water, and I have ability to boil or process or make water safe. And I have a method of carrying that water. Okay? Food. This is part of that six month rotation. You need food that you can eat both cold and hot. Yeah, I know, that, that's very, very disgusting to a lot of people. But the thing to do is get you stuff to, and try it out at home ahead of time. For example, uh, ravioli, uh, Chef Barardi, you know, beefaroni, spaghetti in a can, something like that. Open it up at the house and try it cold and see if it ain't your favorite thing, but you could do it. Okay? Then you've selected your foods. Now, Blackie, why do you want it cold? Because if it's already 90 degrees and it's hot, I don't want to take hot food into me if I'm trying to cool. Okay? Being able to eat it cold means that this is at room temperature. It's in the 90s anyway. See? In the winter, I want to be able to heat it up. And we'll get to that in a second. But I want a food that I can eat hot or cold. A good thing to have in this is like an MRE or something like that which comes with a heater and assortment inside of it. Another good thing is one of these. Now these are presently being sold at Walmart. I'm sure you can get it on the site. And it's kind of like it says emergency food ration bars 2400 calories and it's non um, thirst producing five year shelf life. Okay, It's a block with six dense brownies in it. We used to have this in military stores for certain applications. Now this is an excellent never leaves the pack. Okay, Remember that core we talked about? This is a core. It will taste kind of like a... well this one is apple cinnamon. Kind of like a brownie. Density. Real dense. Uh, it's not thirst producing which means it's kind of moist. It's hard as a brick bat right now, but when you open it up, it actually gets softer. It's just the way it's compressed. But it's, you put a date on it with a magic marker, and you put it in there. Everything that's consumable that goes into this pack is dated, and this is going to rotate. Next, you need something to heat food in. A canteen cup works great. One of the little round things, you get the idea. Something small. Don't go elaborate. Just something that I could dump the can of whatever into have a small alcohol stove or a trangia or something similar. Um, the wax balls which are uh, dryer lint incorporated into paraffin wax make a good way of heating up your rations. But some way of heating up food. Okay? A sterno can works fine. You know, it's not going to boil anything but it'll heat food and that's the idea. So now we have shelter, we have water, we have fire capability, we got a cutting tool. We need a flashlight or some way of seeing. I like a headlamp and a separate flashlight. On the package when you get it, it will tell you the average run time with batteries. Take that into account. If this is a really, really bright flashlight but it's only good for one hour, if on the other hand I get one that's not nearly as bright but it's good for a couple of hundred hours, yeah, carry spare batteries. The batteries get dated and they get rotated in and out as well. Okay? That's basically the core. You can also add to this what you think you need for your personal protection. Whether there's a firearm involved or whatever, you have to make that decision. But this is the core. Okay, now let's talk about the seasonal.